Now today we'll be showing on how to test and replace a knock sensor. Now, in this vehicle, this is a 2010 Subaru. That is where the knock sensor lives, all the way down there on the bottom. And to get to this, on many vehicles, usually you have to remove something to get to the knock sensor. In this case, we had to remove the air intake chamber, which was really only a couple of uh, hose connections, a couple of bolts, and that's it. I have a separate video showing on how to do that. But that being said, once you have access to that sensor, we just have a bolt holding it down. So we'll uh, go ahead and remove that and we'll test it using a multimeter. And because this lives so far in the engine bay, just using a magnet to grab that bolt. And then here comes the sensor. Okay. Now we need to test the sensor and to do that, we need a digital multimeter. These are terrific tools to have. Your local auto parts store, Sears, Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, they all have them. And on most sensors to test them, you need to see or measure the resistance, which is an ohms test. And that's the omega symbol they see on the multimeter. Now for most vehicles, a good reading is between 500 to 600 kilo ohms. And if that sounds confusing, very, very simply, all that you're doing you're taking the two leads from the multimeter and if you take a look on the harness connector you have two prongs you're just taking these leads and touching the prongs it does not matter if the black goes to left or the right or vice versa it doesn't make a difference because you're just doing a resistance test here now just so things are easy on my end I'm going to use these alligator clips you don't need these but doing these videos it just makes it a little bit easier on my end using an alligator clip so you can see everything in one frame essentially otherwise this thing will be scattering all over the place and let's see what we come back with here so as you can see we're getting 0.56 mega ohms if you do the conversion to kilo it's 560 kilo ohms so this is in good shape now for this specific vehicle a good range again is between 500 to 600 Subaru recommends replacing the sensor if it drops below 500 or goes above 600 uh, on most vehicles, if you're not getting a reading here, if it's very, very low or very, very high, it's a very good indication that the sensor needs to be replaced. And when you reinstall the sensor, you want to have it in the same orientation as the old sensor. And I also used a magnet just to get that bolt in there. But that being said, tighten it down. We'll reconnect the sensor and uh, put everything back together.